Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And I am here today to do my book review for Galaxy Cruise The Maiden Voyage by Marcus Alexander Hart, which was the first book I read from the science fiction self published contest semi finalist round. These are the books that were sent to my team. Fun fact, I picked this up while I was suffering from a head cold and so did not feel very great and was looking for something lighter to read. This was billed as a humorous sci-fi space opera and I was hoping it would work for me and it did very much. So I am sure there are things that I have missed. However, I really enjoy, enjoyed it and I'm going to talk about some of it. So we started the book off seeing Leo McGavin on an alien space station. He is the only human there and he is a karaoke DJ and he is listening to alien species butcher earth songs. Part of his DJ role is to, or MC role for this, is you know, also make cracks you know, for different things, make jokes, make people happy. And whenever he tries, then the aliens get verbally abusive. <laughs> they like to call him Stubble Chump and they, they keep calling him a, an American. And you find out in through this, this book that all the aliens are under the misconception that Earth was called America. More details why in a moment. He's just like, you know what? This sucks. I am ready to go back to Eagle Haven, which is the last colony of humanity. He's saving his money, almost has it. And then an alien heiress walks into the bar where he works and starts chatting him up. And she's fascinated with American culture and is wanting to know more and wanted, wants to participate. And then one of her coworkers comes and... Er, comes in looking for her and is upset that she's there and starts a fight, which breaks things, which causes a rift in the section of the space station they are in, and Leo inadvertently saves Varlo, the alien heiress's life. And so then she rewards him by making him a cruise ship captain, and things just kind of roll from there, ends up becoming a contest where between Varlow and Skarden. Skarden's the one who made the disaster to begin with. And then having Leo as the cruise ship captain on a ship that has been designed to look like cruise ships here on Earth, but for space, that if he can shepherd the ship through a seven day excursion, then Varlow wins and gets to remain president of her company, but if she does not win, then Skarden, who is on the board, he'll become president of the company. His vision for the company is basically imperial expansionism, and part of what he wants to do is the last, where Eagle Haven, the last colony of Earth is, he wants to make it into a sewage dump. And that is what gets Leo then invested, because before he's like, oh man, that, that sucks, Marlo, but yeah, I'm, I'm going home after this. Oh wait, you want to destroy the colony, or you want to destroy the world where the last humanity is? No. <laughs> and like I said, just hijinks ensue. People don't take him seriously. And he's trying to solve things. He, that, he has absolutely no clue what he's doing as a cruise ship captain. Has no training, gets no training for it, but people still expect him to know what he's doing. And it just kind of spirals from there. So a pro for this book is the tension that is mounted up after each point, it makes logical sense. First, Leo's invested because he doesn't want to see his world turned into a sewage dump. And then as tension mounts, the next reason the next added layer of why he wants to make sure everything goes well is makes sense. You know, continually to go up just like that. A con for this one for me was the continual bashing.
bashing of Leo by even characters who at first, or who, by even characters who are like, oh yeah, no, I, I'll work with you. And then he says something, they're just like, oh my gosh, you're specious. And he goes, what the hell, you guys have been saying all this stuff to me this whole time. And I realize that it makes logical sense that they don't get it. But after a while, it got to be a lot. However, I mean, the author is consistent about it. It's not just like, oh, no, we think it, you guys are great after like two chapters. No, this is a consistent thing. It's just a personal preference that verbally having that attack over and over and over in a book, I'm just like, I get got to that. I'm like, all right, when do they stop, you know, berating him? <laughs> That's kind of what I was doing. A pro, I was fascinated by the technology that they used. This is what you would call like a soft sci-fi or a light sci-fi because the technology is not explained. It's just like, here's the core of the ship. And the core of the ship does this, this, and this, but you don't know actually how the core of the ship works. Or, hey, we have this like force field around the ship so then people can go on the deck of the ship like you would a cruise ship. There's no explanation of how is it possible to have a force field in space. It's hand wavy on the side on the science fiction, but a lot of this the items on the science fiction are things that you normally would find in science fiction. So it's easy to accept, be like, yeah, yeah, they would have that that in an alien universe, sure, that makes sense. But if you're if you're someone who likes explanations for how technology works, this is not it. And, you know, it's pro because it's a space opera and I love space operas, so you have this nice big kind of more galactic view with the many different species. And it's interesting to see how they all get along with each other or don't get along with each other and their own hiccups. Okay, it looks like on my personal scale, I did rate the characters a little bit lower. And I think it's more just because I'm like, okay, if you read a lot of sci-fi, the characters aren't new in their archetypes kind of thing, but they work so well in this book. And that's something I think that Hart does really well is he takes known science fiction conventions and tropes and just spins them a little bit with that humorous twist. So then you're just like, yeah, I'm along for this romp. Let's go. Yeah, kind of thinking of you know, space balls, that sort of like feel, but with lots of different aliens on a cruise ship in space. So really enjoyed this and definitely want to continue reading the series to find out how do they solve their uh, final problem. The book does wrap up. It doesn't leave you on a cliffhanger, but how it wraps up that makes you go, wait, what's going to happen next? really well done and really enjoyed it. If you have read this, I'd love to know. Please let me know down below. Thank you and have a great day. Mm -hmm.